So now, for the first time, it's gonna start. So and we'll, run on all four. I don't know. Well, I guess we gotta throw a little bit of this East Tennessee antifreeze in here. What is that? That's no good when you hear water coming out on the ground. All right, guys, we're back. Another week outside at my house. As you can see, we've got a variety of tools lined up because we did get the Subaru motor fixed. I hope so. Casey's got a picture and he's going to post it up and you're going to see the issue. But what happened, a quick breakdown, is I got the motor out of the vehicle, back into the garage, was looking over some things, done a compression test before we took it out, done a leak down test in the garage, uh, all those things, the timing marks were lining up, so I was baffled. Uh, researched online, couldn't come up with anything, changed manifolds out, um, still didn't fix the issue, and finally I took the valve cover off on that side where we had two dead cylinders, and I seen two markings on the cam, one for the intake cam and one for the exhaust. And what they had done when the machine shop had reassembled the head, they put the exhaust cam on the intake side and the ex or the intake side on the exhaust side. So it was completely backwards. Um, unbelievable. Uh, who knows, anything can happen. But I took it apart, measured clearances, the shims were in the right spot, but the cams were in the wrong spot. So I did this off camera, uh, reassembled everything, and hopefully now, we got a good motor. So Logan came over today. Say hello. Can you can you see him? <laughs> and we're gonna try to get this thing in the car, installed, and give it a start. It shouldn't take long. These things are pretty easy. So uh, you can watch us while we work. If we find something that might be helpful, we'll stop and uh, but enjoy the show. Let's do it. All right. So the way that we found best to to pull this is to get one of these. Is that nylon? What is yeah, that? Yeah, it's a nylon lifting strap. Yeah, so nylon lifting strap, and we've got it around a couple of the intake runners. Yeah. And we found that this actually works better just because it gives a nice even lift to it. Yeah. So, got these. We're going to hook them up to the hoist, and we'll probably put you guys in fast motion here. Yeah, buddy. All right, real quick, you can see that the transmission is just kind of sitting on the cross member right now. Yeah. So we do have the jack over here. Yeah. We are going to... Show them my cap. Okay. So <laughs> to make it a little bit more sturdy, yeah. we have this nice custom jack lift. Yep, it's a jack lift. So the surface area on this thing, obviously your jack's pretty small. And this thing is an automatic, so the pan on the transmission uh, is kind of beefy. It's removable too, and, and it has a filter on. These transmissions are pretty neat. Um, but in order for all the surface area not to be on one spot on your jack and squash the pan, uh, this is a good little tool right here. So a little tech tip: if you can, if you've got an extra rotor laying around, this thing does fit up underneath there pretty good to lift the transmission up. So we're going to lift the transmission up. We'll slide the motor over and start to drop it in. All right, we've got the hoist in place. Engine is dangling over the bay. We do apologize, it is a little bit windy today, so audio may be off just a little bit. But now we're just going to lower it down and kind of move things around to <laughs> try to fit it in. Yeah. It's a tight squeeze, but we're gonna, we're gonna try to get it. Do it. That's right. You can see that it's made it up pretty well. 
Um, the block does have two studs on it that slips right into the transaxles um, openings. Yep. So we've got that in. Now we just need to start a couple bolts up top. And then the fun part is threading in your torque converter <laughs> bolts. Yeah, it's no fun. It's really tight back here on the back. So I've got, uh, I think it's a 12 millimeter and I've got a little extension for the ratchet wrench that works really well. But you just gotta be careful off the drop back down in there. So it works pretty good. All right, guys, easy enough. Uh, literally, how long? Three minutes? If that. Three minutes. You can have the motor setting into the cradle. We got one transmission bolt in. Um, it is setting down into the cross member now, so we could put the motor mount bolts on if we want to. Uh, we don't have to, uh, but we're going to tackle these torque converter bolts next, and then we'll just start hooking everything up. That's just like a big puzzle. Easy enough. Subarus, that's why we love them. Well, two out of three. Ain't bad. Two out of three ain't hey, bad. At least it ain't a BMW. That's right. All right, here's the tool I was talking about. Just a uh, regular uh, 12 millimeter ratcheting wrench with a little 12 millimeter extension. So what you do to line these up, you've got the, the hole in the back if you've got your intake manifold on. It's good to have two people for this, but you'll have somebody up front with a 22 millimeter on a half inch to rotate the uh, flex plate around. And then if you have the starter out, which you should, um, reach on the back side where the starter is at and access the torque converter and you can line your holes up that way just stick a bolt in there and leave the head of it barely in and you'll feel it catch the threads as it comes by so now we'll have logan hold the front side and i'm going to tighten these down to uh, torque specifications There's the starter, power steering pump, it's in its place, still got to put the cans in it here, and then there's a 12 down here and back here I got to put back in it, but it's sitting in the correct spot. So far, so good. Torque to specification. That's uh, right. Quick update while we got you. 
Got the cameras on us. Uh, it's been what? Maybe 30 minutes? If that. Maybe. 30 minutes. Uh, we've got everything hooked up um, that we've been able to reach so far. A couple things left. we got the air box. Uh, we got the alternator wiring here. Um, the battery, of course, is not in it. we got the trans cooler line looped. Um, we've got the brake booster line to hook up. But overall, you know, about probably about 10, 15 more minutes, uh, we're going to throw a compression tester on here uh, and give you guys the first visual of if the cam swapping it around fixed it. So really odd issue. Uh, I think it did. We'll see. I don't know. But uh, we may have a running motor here in about an hour. So here we go. Back to it again. All right, guys, look, check it out. Literally, maybe since the last time, five to 10 minutes, uh, everything's hooked up. Of course, we don't have a radiator in it or the AC condenser, uh, but we did tell you we're gonna do a compression test. Go back to the previous video and watch the first test that we did. I don't even think it was maybe 85 pounds, maybe. Um, so let's see if our mystery issue was the cam swapped over. I wanna get in. And it's not 100% correct. We don't have all the plugs out, but it's in, almost impossible to do this unless you lift the motor. But this will be close enough. So we'll, it's still cold, cold compression. You got three of the plugs in. I'll hold the throttle wide open and we'll see what happens. I need another hand. I need to know, are you nervous? I am nervous. I hope it fixed it. 175. Yes! <laughs> All right. Yeah. Maybe it'll start. So we'll we'll take this back out, take the battery back off to put our plug back in, um, put the cool back on, and we'll um, we'll get we'll give it a dry fire here and see what happens. Maybe it'll start, maybe it'll run, maybe it'll smoke, maybe it'll knock. Who knows? But we're gonna try it up and see what happens. All right, give us a status update. Big thumbs up. You've seen it. Compression numbers definitely. Cold compression went up dramatically, almost doubled, uh, or more than doubled. Uh, so I did. I do believe that was the issue, obviously. So now, for the first time, it's going to start. So and we'll, run on all four. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe three. <laughs> Maybe two. Who knows? But we're going to start it up, see what it does. I don't have any coolant in it, so we're just going to let it run for a minute. Uh, make sure it doesn't. Uh, miss, spit, sputter, any of those things. Uh, time of belt might fall off. Who knows? I don't know. Don't say that. It might. Here we go. Hey. How's that sound? Sounds knocking. <laughs> no, it sounds good, I think. It's not really smoking. Oh, there's a little smoke. It definitely has an exhaust leak. Oh yeah, major exhaust leak. I know where it's at. So in the center, if you look at it, I tried, I was gonna fix it. And I was like, man, it's not even worth me taking it out. But if you look in the center, they put two clamps on it 
tried to wrap it with a piece of metal and then it looked like they welded it with a stick welder. Uh, so it definitely has an exhaust leak. But that's okay, I'm fine with that. I just wanted to make sure the motor was gonna run. You can bring it up to the shop and... Yeah, yeah, we'll take it up, it up to the lift and, and cut it off and put a piece in if we have to, uh, have to do that. But I just wanted to make sure it's gonna run first. So you can it, hear it. It sounds smooth right sounds now. Great. Yeah, it's very quiet. So Subarus are prone for head gasket leaks and we have no water in it right now. So I'm gonna shut it off. Definitely uh, shut it off. And uh, we'll get back to hooking a little more uh, the stuff up on the front. All right, guys. Got the radiator condenser in. Got both lines, cooling lines on, hoses. Uh, what else is left? Well, I guess we got to throw a little bit of this East Tennessee antifreeze in here. Check it out. I didn't get none, so sue me. I didn't know that we would get this far, so we're gonna try it with just a little bit of water. What is that? That's no good when you hear water coming out on the ground. Um, looks like the thermostat gasket didn't seal. Oopsie. <laughs> hmm. We'll be back. We'll be back. All right, Logan, tell them what you did for me. What a good well, friend. I ran to O'Reilly's and got a high quality $1.99 <laughs> O-ring for the thermostat. Yeah. So you just pop that on and we're filling it with this uh, lovely antifreeze. Yeah, that's quality antifreeze, guys. Un unfortunately, we don't have our uh, little bleeding system here. I yeah. forgot to bring it, so we're doing it the difficult way. We'll have to drain this out anyway, so no yeah. big deal. Yeah, we're just going to see if it's going to overheat like all Subarus do. Right. <laughs> it's not going to. <laughs> I hope not. We'll see. We'll, we'll bring you back in just a minute when we get it a little bit filled up. What do you think, Justin? Hey, I think it's running. So we've got uh, some of our good old East Tennessee antifreeze in it. Logan's got the heat on inside, uh, get the thermostat to open up and let it cycle. Hopefully it'll pull some in there. And, uh, it won't overheat. You know, it's got new head gaskets on it. He did have the head resurfaced, um, all that stuff. Uh, of course, we did have the issue with the cams. Obviously, that fixed that issue because uh, it is running smooth. No knocks, no weird sound uh, that we hear. It is smoking a little bit. But we kind of anticipated that was going to happen. Hopefully burn some of that junk off the inside. And uh, Who knows? Uh, maybe it'll be a good runner after all. We'll see. So we're gonna we're gonna keep on filling it up with water, and uh, and we might take it around the block and see what it does. That's right. Hey, we're driving it. This is a terrible idea. Uh, so we've got a little bit of an issue here. Yeah, a little bit small in the so Subaru world. It doesn't seem like the thermostat is opening or it is staying open. Yeah, what is it do? Oh, instantly over here. guys uh short trip uh the thermostat did act like it cracked open a little bit so it was pushing some into the heater core uh still it's getting a little bit hot so potentially have something going on with the thermostat and it's not allowing it uh, water to go through the bottom line it's still a little bit cold too so uh gonna have to dive into that pulled back in and found that we do have a line leaking on the uh, trans cooler so i knew i was going to replace that we were just trying to fix it to where we could drive it but it is leaking uh so without risking anything else or damage to the transmission or motor. Probably a good time to stop, uh, reassess what we got going on, let it cool down and uh, then go from there. But it does run, so that fixed our problem, so. Yeah, it's pretty smooth. Yeah. So I guess next step is probably pull the thermostat back out and test it, yeah. put it in some boiling water and 
Yeah, I'll see if it opens. Yeah, we'll test the thermostat. I've heard these Subarus are particular on the thermostats they take. The guy that I bought the car off of or the engine give me the thermostat, and I don't know that it's an OE one, so I uh, may even do that go get another thermostat. Luckily, we didn't use antifreeze for that purpose, um, so I think we're still in good shape. Just For that some, purpose? Yeah, for that purpose. Getting some kinks worked out, but... Um, Man, guys, comment if you've seen anything that we could do a little bit different or have any insight on the issues that we're having. Uh, we'd love to have some feedback from you guys. So uh, this is it for today. It's getting a little cool outside. The wind's starting to blow, so I think we're going to finish it right here. So remember, like, comment, and subscribe. Logan? We'll catch you guys next time. See you. Small update. Yeah, small update. We did uh, figure out the cooling issue. I guess it just wasn't enough water inside the engine to let it cycle and let the thermostat open. So we took the upper radiator hose off, filled it up, put it back on, uh, started the heat inside again, and it did come on and it cycled. Yeah. It does sound a lot better. It's a lot smoother now. I think we're finally getting some good temperature in the motor, um, good heat inside, and then uh, in true Subaru fashion again, it lets us down. It does have a valve cover gasket leaking on the opposite side. Um, so I don't know if there were new gaskets used on it or not, but now we have the task of removing the valve covers and putting new gaskets on it, and we got to fix a line on the transmission still. So a couple of little things, but overall, I'm, I'm happy. It's running. It's movable. Uh, if I need to move it around, then uh, hopefully we'll get it over to the shop and uh, get it up on the lift and just get those little things fixed. But uh, so far, so good, I guess. I mean, good news, bad news. Good news, bad news. Yeah, yeah it just means you might see yeah. it again. I guess that's <laughs> bad news for us, good news for you if you like Subaru. So, um, yeah, I think we're going to, again, call it quits. Like, comment, subscribe. Catch you next time.